That's Marky Mark. That's Tank Top Mike in his new tank top. Look at those arms. I'm like this, and I'm the prince. This is the NAO show. Welcome. We have made it. We have crowned the 2021 champion of the NAO Outlaw League. Well, first, how you guys doing? A little bittersweet. Bittersweet that we're here, but doing okay. It's okay, Tank Top. We're yeah, here I'll, for you. I want to let Mike go first and see how he was doing. <laughs> but was cricket, cricket's there for a second. That was funny. We had to read the room, man. <laughs> we had to read the room. Where are we going to go with this show? <laughs> how you doing, Marky Mark? Doing very well. I'm on vacation until the 4th. Loving every minute of it. Doing my man, best. It's pretty nice to be on vacation till July fourth. Golly, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> doing my best impression of a sloth. So having a good old time. Ready to go for the show, though. Heck yeah, Mike. Don't cry yet. But let's get into it, Marky Mark. Yeah, let's start out with the championship. Congratulations to our buddy A Bomb, Orlando City FC, one seventy five. Tank top Mike 113. So, Mike, to me, it seemed like everyone in your lineup was average or below. And A Bomb was getting all the ceiling plays, including guys like Burkhead and Berrios. What a championship. Talk it out, guys. Yeah, that's nuts. And, you know, Aaron and I were talking, you know, before while we were both setting lineups, and it was like, oh, here's my lineup. And then he's out with COVID. So, okay, here's my lineup. Yeah. Well, he's injured. Here's my lineup. And that, so that's how you ended up starting Craig Reynolds in the finals, um, which really sucked. But, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't want to toot my own horn, but all season I've been talking about my running back group, and I went out there with just Kamara. That was all that was left in the end. So, you know, Aaron, I, I got beat. I couldn't have won no matter what happened. So, you know, I don't want to take anything from Aaron's win. But, man, that sucked. You know, that was tough for me to go into that final with um, – you know, I spent a lot of time on that running back room, and uh, it was tough to not go in <laughs> um, how I, I wanted to. But, um, you know, that that's okay. I think uh, I have a lot of time until next year. So we'll come back next year. But congrats to Aaron. Like I said, I'm not complaining about it. He had some injuries too, and he had the guts to start Burkhead and Berrio. So can't take that away from him at all. So <laughs> I think it's a, a testament to your – uh, character that you take this in stride because I know how much you worked on your your starting lineup and to really strengthen that running back room and to go into the championship game with just AK when Swift and everybody was down and you had to freaking follow every piece of news about COVID for two weeks practically. I know how bad you feel about this loss. And to be honest, I don't think anybody was going to beat uh, Abe on this week. If he started the the water guy for Jacksonville, he was going to score 25 points. So I think it was just his game to win, unfortunately. Because you alluded to it there, Tink Top Mike. He started guys like Berrios and Burkhead, which both went off on his freaking starting lineup, mm. which all of us – here at the end of O show, just an absolutely foresaw. We totally saw this happening. <laughs> if you had listened to the show, you would have found out that uh, Hill would only score less than three points. But Burkhead, man, almost 28 points up in here. So if you want to win next year, listen to our show. <laughs> yeah, only in the deepest of leagues. Would you see Burkhead and Berrios started and people that did? Well, Berrios, not so much. Berrios was sort of a, okay, I didn't I didn't put up a goose egg. I got somebody in there that got me double digits. But but Burkhead, you know, there's not many people starting him, but the one, a lot of them that did ended up going to the championship this week. A lot of people are having their championship this week going up. So, man, um, good calls there. You know, kind of pressed. Those guys were pressed into action. Not the guys he wanted to start, but man, it sure worked out for him. So give him, give him credit for, you know, I'm sure he was looking at all of the all of the possibilities, and he picked the right ones. Because I even said in the show last week, maybe Jordan Howard 
you know, if you get too many guys that are injured or COVID, maybe you go with Jordan Howard. And he wasn't a good start. It was the it was the Burkhead man. That was the one to go with. So congratulations to Ibom. Congratulations to Tank Top Mike. Great season, Tank Top. You didn't fall out of the playoff this year, man. You stayed up in there all season long. Yeah, I was and, gonna say, I went bottom four to top four into the championship. So that's right, a, man. That was, that was an awesome, not a wasted season, but not awesome comeback. And I hate that your running backs didn't didn't uh, hold up throughout because maybe you would have made a little bit more noise in that championship game. So I do want to give Tank Top Mike a little credit here. Uh, if they they didn't do a review of this week, but I think if they did. They would have found out that Tank Top Mike put the best team he could put on in his starting lineup. That just bodes well for our competitiveness of this league, regardless of what you're staring down. You're gonna, we're gonna make try to put the best people out there. You know. Yeah. Well, great season for you guys. Congratulations. Both of you in the money, that doesn't hurt either. So Yes, sure. sir. A little bit of green in the takes pocket. The, takes the sting out just a little bit when you don't win the championship. Get a little bit of green. All right, let's go to the third place match, which was the Pooh Crew 154, Silly Dilly 73. So, guys, in two playoff matches, Dylan averaged 69.5 points per game. So yes. for all of those, including Dylan, who said we were being too hard on him, we told you so. Talk it out, guys. Talk it out, guys. Well, I think uh, if you look at Dylan's squad here, he's going to come back after he's watched this uh, and say, oh, but Leonard Fournette wasn't out there to score me 35 points. Yeah, I know. I'm an actual Bucks fan. I, I know that he wasn't there. We got blanked by the New Orleans Saints. But... This was what was on the wall the whole season. The fact that you even made it to the last four is a joke. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna let that one simmer a little bit. Go ahead, Tank Top Mike. I think it's funny uh, with Silly here. He it just pretty apparent he hates Ryan Tannehill. He hates the Titans, but he keeps he keeps trotting Julio Jones out every single week. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I've Alabama. never seen anybody hate Alabama. the Titans more than that guy. But here, I knew where you were going with that, and it was beautiful. It was fantastic. Alabama Homer, right there, keeps on trotting his guy out. Yeah, that that was you know, but really, like you said, this was this was what we all saw coming on this one. Um, hey, you know, even yeah. uh, even my set tight end, which I don't know if you guys noticed, Ian didn't start. Or Ian started Kelsey, so even a lot of tight end, 154, that's not too bad. So, Congrats on third hole place, Ian. Yeah, enjoy that bronze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I won't be as harsh on Dilly and say it was a joke he got up there because he, he did have some some good moments, some good, some good scores at the right times, and he definitely had some luck. And... Yeah, we all know that's what it takes sometimes. you got to have a little bit of luck to go along with a good roster. So I won't say it was a joke, but I will say that we all were calling his demise. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately for him, it came at the end of the season in the playoffs. Mark, Mark, excuse me, but we've set a standard on this show that we do not like Silly Dilly this year. So (laughs) you're going to have to go about that differently, sir. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I'm my I'm my own guy. You guys can pile on them, but I'm my own guy. I gotta give credit where it's due. Gotta Maybe give him a little bit, a little bit of credit, a little bit of credit. So, all righty. Well, let's move on to the Miyagi Bowl. So, we had uh, Goofy Jace ninety nine, Swamp Dick seventy six. So these these picks were already pretty much decided uh, last week for the most part, but. I want to give Goofy some credit. He went out there and he officially won the overall number one pick. Um, Congratulations, he's, Goofy! Yeah, yes, sir. He's got he's got Ricky's too. So it was a little bit of salt in the wound. He's like, I got your pick, and I'm gonna beat your ass, and I'm gonna get one and two no matter what. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Talk it out, guys. What do we got? 
Yeah, this one's cool for me because, you know, we, we talked a lot about Goofy and what he's going to do for the season. And is he rebuilding? Is he not? Who knows? He ended up with picks one and two, so he did something okay, you know, by the end of it. Um, he's got a, a he's got some starters that he can play again for the year. He's got some spots that he can play. <laughs> And there's the husky talking to Goofy. He, she knows how much he likes her. <laughs> um, but you know, you can fill some spots with picks one and two, and and nine. He has picked nine as well. So, not a bad end of the season there for Goofy. Yeah, I totally agree, Tank Top Mike. I think looking at his team, he's got some definite hot hitters going into next year with those picks. I mean, Jalen Hurts, he he was quarterback two for the longest time, so he. Fantasy wise, he's gonna look real nice, and I know he's an Eagles fan, so he, he roots a little harder for him every week. And when he puts it in, everybody that has uh, started a guy from their team knows how that feels starting every week. Going ah, if he if my team does bad, my fantasy team does bad. But I, I like Hertz. He's he's very up and coming. Definitely fantasy wise, he's got that running upside. Great person to move forward with, and. Uh, Probably a position he doesn't have to look at this year as heavily as he did last year with the one and two. I mean, he could go running back, running back. He could go wide receiver, wide receiver, one and one. And we wouldn't bat an eye at it. I think those first two picks are going to really bolster his team. Because if you guys remember, at the beginning of the season, he we all thought he was going to be the goofy of last year and just run away with it again. So potentially he could be a dark horse next year. Yeah, I love you got picks one and two. Um, it's it's probably a, a really good wide receiver class, uh, average to below or average running back class. But if you're sitting there at one and two, you if you get the best out of a bad running back class, you might still have somebody that you can get in there in their rookie season. Um, if he gets the best of a really good wide receiver class, man, you know, he could be mm-hmm. sitting pretty there. His uh we always talked about even last year, his uh, his roster kind of aging out already um, in in dynasty. So uh, get a, v- a little bit of a youth infusion going here uh, to go along with some of these veterans he has, and he could still be competitive. So I uh, I love it. He yeah he kind of kind of fell short this season, but looks like he can reload and and be right in the thick of it again next season. Playing in the bottom four schedule, bottom five schedule, I should say, as opposed to the top. Um, yeah, you might be able to jump right back up in there again. Not to uh, count out Humpty, though. When Derrick Henry comes back next year, we all know how he was before Derrick Henry went down. Yeah. He was a wrecking ball. So we'll see you next year there, Humpty. Yeah, I expect Ricky to make some make some moves here. I don't think he's going to be too quiet on the trade block here for too much longer. So yeah, I expect something to happen. What's interesting to me is he – he got a bad. He inherited a bad roster. He made tons of moves, turned it over, made a made a a pretty good squad out of it. But then everything kind of fell apart, and he started selling again. So that it's sort of like, man, he's, he's his roster has been through the ringer. So I'm I'm interested to see. He's probably going to have to kind of do the same thing, I think, and and uh, to try to be competitive again next year. All right, let's move on to the consolation match in the Miyagi Bowl. I guess we're calling this one the Toilet Bowl. So the underdogs, 116, FNG, 91. Interesting to me that right now the underdogs have none of their own draft picks, not a single one. But if they can manage to trade for some, they'll pick third in each round. What do you think, guys? Try to put a positive spin on it. (laughs) I think uh, the DBs have a great team moving forward. I think uh, I think all of us on the show thought they were going to be a front runner this year going into this season, and this just goes to show you that you can't win a can't win a league in the off season. You got to play the games too. So we'll s- be interested to see what he does with what they do with the seventh overall pick. If uh, if I were a betting man, I'd bet to. His- I bet on that pick being up for grabs for anybody trying to get into the first round. It's a later first round pick. They got a bunch of first round picks next year, which is going to supposedly be a better draft <laughs> all round. And then, and then, yes, and then uh, they got a bunch of picks in 24 also. 
So <laughs> when they're asking in trades for later picks, you might want to give a look at how many picks they got in that next year because they are collecting them. Let me tell you. Yeah, they they loaded up and they're they're looking pretty good and and really. Um, going into next year, they have a lot of young guys still. Um, you know, Antonio Gibson is he an, is he an RB one or not? Who who knows? But you know, they've got a good young team still, and it's crazy to look at. Like, I still like their team, and I don't understand it. <laughs> you know, now they have some. You know, you go down to their IR spot: Michael Thomas, Christian McCaffrey, Juju, Hawkinson. Like, they can bring all those guys back up next year. Like. And now it's like I don't know what to think about their team because I love their team so much going into the year. <laughs> so did Mabel. Um, and, you know, and now now they're down here in the bottom, and it's like they get to bring all these guys back. I, I guarantee some get traded. Just knowing Evan and how that works, some of those guys are getting traded. And they yeah. could look a little bit different. But, uh, yeah, I think you're right, Sean. They, they have an okay future looking. So we'll see. If I was uh, one of those owners, I would be pushing CMC probably. Uh, me personally, I'm down on CMC. I put him in the same category as Barkley with less hate in my heart. Uh, but yeah, CMC is one of those going to be those tough moves. You're going to have to try to sell him on somebody unless somebody comes to you really, really wanting him. Uh, but shoot, if they run with him next year and he stays healthy, CMC still has top of fantasy draft boards on his uh on his capabilities i mean when he plays everyone's expecting him to go 20 plus easy oh yeah he, he did i mean anytime he's been in he's the score is high but the problem is he's just hasn't been in i think he missed what 19 games in the last two seasons possibly something high there um and he he, he hadn't missed any in his you know i don't know how many seasons three four seasons you know he hadn't missed any, and then all of a sudden he misses nineteen and two. So, it's the trend is the trend is not great. So it might not be an easy uh, an easy sell high kind of guy, but um, definitely that would be if I if I had him, he'd be the number one guy I'd be putting out on the trade block and seeing if somebody still believes in him. You know, I think somebody he still is believes. officially on the trade block, isn't he? What's he that? Is, I think he is on the trade block actually. Yeah, I I I yeah. saw all this stuff popping up and I'm like, well, <laughs> we're not even trading yet. So I'm, I'm not paying attention to it yet, but I, I, I am looking forward to the trades to come and we'll be talking about them on the show and we'll, we'll be analyzing them. Something we haven't done in a few weeks. So it'll be fun to start talking about them again. The way our <laughs> league is man. <laughs> it, a lot of rosters are going to do a lot of turnover. It's going to be fun. All right, well, let's move on to the Who Cares Bowl. So, whew, we got The Prince, 175. The Tough Luck Kid, 89. So, if we were still doing Miyagi, even though Dylan had the lowest score, I'd have to say I got the biggest ass wax. <laughs> we might have to flip a coin to see who got the Miyagi this week. But, oh, man, Sean, if you'd have somehow made it to the championship, you would have won it by .14 points. That would, so, have been, that would have been uh, real nice. <laughs> tell us about your big day. This might is this your all time high score? That was a big one, man. That's what I think said. it is. Uh, I think my uh, my next highest score was week one, where I dropped 150 on the DBs in week one. But uh, yeah, I think this is definitely one of my highest scores. To be honest with you, uh, this is what I've been trying to create with my flex plays and getting my wide receivers uh kind of early hoping that they turn into guys like this so hopefully this is more of the same next year hey put up a nice total with melvin gordon giving you a whole half point yeah Good that point. half point thanks it's melvin gordon impressive. appreciate you <laughs> yeah you left a little bit on the bench not a lot but could have been even higher could have been up in the 180s yeah that would have been nice I think uh, you, you benefited a lot from uh, Joe Burrow being personally insulted by the Ravens a few weeks ago. I don't know if you saw all that news, but um, it came out. Yeah, and, he took that real personally yeah, and so. left it all on the field, huh? Apparently so. Yeah. Well, those those uh, that division, that's what happens in that division. So, you know, yeah, but like you said, that's what you put that team together for. You, you nailed it. Um, 
Who cares? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on my side, there wasn't much to get excited about. I had, I just, every week from like, and I'm not crying a river here, but every week starting like in the last week of the, of the regular season, I was like losing, I just was losing guys every week. Somebody, somebody knew this week, somebody knew, you know, somebody else the next week. And I lost Gabriel Davis this week to COVID and I, man, that lineup wasn't, wasn't much to write home about, but, uh, now Sean, it's, uh, I'm not taking anything away from you, man. You, you put up a good score and you've got some guys to be reckoned with next year. You got a good receiver, young receiver core there. So, well, it was kind of rare, but all my guys started, which was a rarity the last two weeks in the NAO. A lot of other teams were hoping that their guys didn't show up on the COVID list. And I was right there with them and I kind of dodged that bullet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I certainly limped in and you came in strong because you had lost Waddle the week before and, I got you by what eighteen point seven, but that proved to not be quite enough to win the Who Cares Bowl. So, <laughs> good job, man. Nice, nice score for you. So, we're talking about Who Cares, we care just a little bit because the winner of the Who Cares Bowl gets the first pick in the NAO Pro Bowl. Shall we move on? If you're listening. This is the part you've been waiting for. Yeah, yeah good. Hey. Oh, thank God. <laughs> He's been antsy. He's on vacation too, and he doesn't have much better to do, apparently. So. <laughs> so let's move on to the NAO Pro Bowl draft with the first pick. Sean, who are you going to take? Well, uh, I've been thinking about this long and hard. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> With the first pick in the 2021 Pro Bowl draft, I take the mic. Yeah. Yeah. Take the mic. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your number one overall pick. How do you feel? That feels fantastic. It feels like kindergarten recess all over again, getting picked first because I'm the best. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking you, of being the best, he also the has the best wide receiver other than Justin Jefferson in Cooper Cup. And him next to JJ is going to look real <laughs> nice, let me tell you. Oh, you're setting your lineup already. Nice. Hey, I didn't pick these guys out of the freaking thin air. <laughs> yeah, if, I, I'm, if I'm looking at it, the ones that jump off the page uh, to start in the Pro Bowl would be Cup playing Baltimore, who's been just horrible. What the, what the heck happened to that defense? I know there's some injuries, but even before the injuries, they've been terrible against. They the got Packers. smoke checked by Cincinnati last week. And you got you got you got um, LA Rams still playing for to try to win a division, mm -hmm. trying to get a high seed. So they're going to still be playing. So Cup could have a day. Diggs against Atlanta looks good too because uh, again, those guys are playing for a division. They're playing for a high seed. So man, you got two good guys still playing for something this time of the year. Those ones jump off the page, man. You you could put tank top Mike's receivers in there at the one and two and be done with it. What do you think about looking forward there, tank top Mike? Yeah, a little more long term kind of thing. You know, the the thing that kind of jumps to me is when in doubt, you know, eight years from now you start Patty Mahomes. He's always there. <laughs> <laughs> Worst case scenario, right. you just put Mahomes in. <laughs> it's likely he'll still be around. Yeah. So and still playing at a very high level because he will have adopted the TV twelve persona. I actually got more uh, TV twelve um, um, gear uh, for my wife for Christmas. Um, some electrolyte water. It's got monkfish and salt water in it, and it tastes like shit. <laughs> How much did you pay for that? Twenty bucks, and it's like this big. <laughs> it's hard to imagine monkfish tasting like shit, but yeah, you know, I believe I you. Like <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. It was a terrible Christmas gift. <laughs> I got you something that tastes like ass. Merry <laughs> Christmas. Sip on that, will you? <laughs> well, All right, Marky Mark, who do you got in your first pick, sir? All right, my first pick. I'm going to go with the champ. I'm going to take Orlando City FC, a bomb. So let me, uh, look at, looking at his uh, roster here, I think I would probably uh, 
I think Josh Allen could be a good one. He's still playing for the division, like we said, playing for a high seed. They got Atlanta. I think Josh Allen might be our starting QB. Devontae Adams versus Minnesota. They're trying to hold on to the number one seed. That's one of those division games, but I think that's one where Adams he's not gonna be he's not gonna be held down by Minnesota, I don't think. So those are those are two good ones I see right off the bat. Who do you think, Sean? I think you're overlooking the nice uh roster that the champ does have because Mark Andrews is top tight end right now. He scored over 20 points in the last three games. And Nick Chubb is about to go play Pittsburgh. I don't know if you know this or if you watch football or not, but Pittsburgh is god-awful. Yeah. They are horrible. Horrible. You're talking about Atlanta? That's just as bad, I think. Yeah, he's got a bunch. Hard decisions here. Yeah, he's got a bunch. This roster here. We can only take two. He's got a bunch. I don't think we're gonna we're gonna uh, hold the line with uh, Burkhead, but I, I could be <laughs> wrong. You know, we'll do it as a group. I'm sure, but you know, he did I score think, almost thirty points last week. I think saying. he they squeezed all the juice out of, out of that one. So, <laughs> <laughs> what do you see long term there, Tank Top Mike? Yeah, I like to pick. You know, like as your top guy. Um, you think of Aaron's team, you think, you know, what he's done the last two seasons. He's always in playoff contention. He always, obviously just won the whole thing. Um, you know, and then you think back about the times that his trades have come up on the show. We've never had a bad thing to say about his trades. He's very calculated. He's a very, very long-term thinker. Good manager. So Yeah, he really is. Well said. Here, here. Really is. So, All right, Sean. With the second pick in the 2021 Pro Bowl draft, Third I'm going to take the DBs. Right. Yep, mm -hmm. I did it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was talking over you. So you're taking the DBs. Yes. I'm into that. Or, the potential I'm into of having Justin Jefferson, Cooper Cup, Stefan Diggs, and C.D. Lamb all on the same roster. Good luck, Marky Mark. Good luck. Got it all laid out, man. <laughs> Well, I I see a lot of tough matchups. I mean, they're you know you <laughs> talked about CD, but they're playing Arizona. Um, not an easy, not an easy matchup. Arizona has not been playing well, but it's still not an easy matchup, and they're both playing for uh, you know trying to get the higher seeds there in the uh, in the NFC. So I don't know. Um, I look at I, I'm looking a little further down. I see Jacoby Myers versus Jacksonville. You got Darnell Mooney versus New York Giants, so they may be more of the flex guys if you want to exploit the good matchups, you know. But uh, I see the smoke that you're trying to blow up my ass, and I'm not going to allow it to happen. <laughs> not hey, on my watch. Go ahead and start CD against uh, against Arizona. I think that's a great one. What do you think, Mike? <laughs> long term, what do you think? You know, long term, I think you get. You get Brandon, who's the voice of reason, the grounding man over there. And then yes. you get – you get he's a wild card. What's Evan going to do, you don't know, but he puts together great teams. And not only that, you, you kind of get the two-for-one a little bit. You get the two-for-one yeah. on that. But, uh, you know, I think they're, they're always in it. They're, they had the consensus top team. They make, all, they make right moves. They've got some good young talent. Um, Najee Harris had one heck of a season. So, you know. You know, long term thinking about Great him. Upside. Yeah, that yeah. the 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 strategy that goes into their their team building. I think it's a great thing long term for for this. Yeah, Brandon is a, a good voice of reason sometimes, and but I'll give him the I'll still give him the credit where he traded up to get uh, Antonio Gibson, and we gave him shit. And you know, Gibson, besides the injuries, man, he's he's looking like a an RB one in the league. So. Definitely. If he can get himself healed up in the offseason, man, they got a good one moving forward there. I got to give Brandon the credit. We gave him a bunch of crap <laughs> for that one. But, man, uh, it just turned out he gets the last laugh, I think, on that one. All right. Uh, okay, so pick number four, my second pick. I am going to go with the one of the other playoff teams. I'm taking Silly Dilly. Dang! <laughs> All right, I see you, Marky Mark. Okay. Dilly dilly. Probably didn't expect that one, but I, you know, 
he was in the playoffs, and I gave him a little credit, and I'm going to go ahead and bet on that horse. I think he's still got a little bit in him. Uh, looking at his roster here, I, I do see some good ones, but, you know, his Tampa Bay players jump off because they're playing the Jets, but then it scares me a little bit because they could have their backups in there early on in the game. Um, I do like for uh, I do like for Dylan, I like Hunter Henry and Damian Harris. RB2 going up against Jacksonville. <laughs> what were you doing with your finger there, Sean? <laughs> Looked like you were getting ready to do something. Pinching you. You were getting ready to do something with your finger there and not pick your nose as usual. So, yeah, um, I like those Patriots plays against Jacksonville. What do you think, Sean? Man, I think you have some fantastic options on this lineup. <laughs> Let me tell you, Julio Jones has been just lighting it up on the COVID list. He's somebody that could really go off against Miami, so you should really think about him. And Tyler Lockett as a uh, kind of a under-the-flyer type guy, I think this is going to be one of his games where he just blows up against Detroit. So I think you should really look at those. And uh, Zach Ertz is really turned into the tight end that we all thought he was going to be when he got traded, so you should look at him also. Great advice. We'll look into that. <laughs> we'll get right on that. Get right on that. Mike, do you think Dylan has uh does he hasn't does he have enough to uh to play the long game here? What do you think? Uh well, he hasn't left the league yet, so I imagine he has some sort of long term plan for you guys. <laughs> don't like my pick. Sound like you don't like my pick, man. All right. <laughs> he was in the playoffs, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm playing the averages. Yeah, no, that's my, my, my real, that's fantastic analysis. I think that's uh, yeah. ESPN worthy. Thank my, you. Uh, Thank my you. real analysis is you get not only do you get Dilly, and you know, like we got the two for one on the DBs, you get Dilly in the shit vortex. So, <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, now that's you can that's just underestimate move. the shit vortex. Yeah. It's a real thing. <laughs> I thought I was getting by with that, but you, you know, you knew exactly where I was coming from. <laughs> I want the shit vortex on my side of the Pro Bowl. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, secrets out. Damn it, Sean. <laughs> you got a pick to make. Who is who is pick number five or your third pick? Pick number three in the 2021 Pro Bowl Draft by me is Goofy Jace. Welcome to the team, man. All right. Well. I'm looking. just looking down his mm -hmm. lineup yeah. here. Yeah, He's he got does. some great players. Uh, next year, he's got J.K. Dobbs coming back. He's got Ridley if he comes back. But this year... He has Aaron Jones. We could play him at the running back position. Keenan Allen could have a fantastic day. If we need a wide receiver, we got uh, Antonio Brown. But we might look at him for QB. The good thing about Goofy Jace's uh, lineup here is that he has a bunch of options that we could lean into if we need to. Yeah, in this case, you know, with, with uh, Dylan, I was a little worried about his Tampa Bay players, but he's got A B and Gronk. And those guys could put up enough in the first half to to make it worth playing those guys. So I'm not as scared of them versus the Jets because they're the top two targets. So and uh he might be one that uh with the with the defense he's got the Philly DST versus Washington football team. If they put up another game like they did against Dallas I think Dallas got like 25 points. <laughs> you know, their DST put up 25 points against the uh, Washington football team. So that can be a good one. And, yeah, he's got Hertz. Hertz is the QB6 on the year. Got that rushing upside. He's definitely got some great options that you can put in there. So that's that's a good pick. Mike, what do you think long-term? We talked a little bit about it already with his draft picks, but Goofy Jace long-term, what do you see there? Um, in the first two rounds in 2022 and 2023, nine picks. Wow. There's wow. there's your long term. <laughs> when did he do that? Yeah. The guy goes the guy goes from making no trades to having <laughs> nine picks in the first two yeah. in, in the first two rounds in two drafts. That's crazy, man. So yeah, a lot of long term stability there. Um and I think Goopy's Goopy's a very level headed manager. Um I it took a long time to make the Kamara trade go down, you know, because it was a it was a very calculated move. He knows what he's doing. 
um, obviously he's got the picks to prove it. So, you know, I think uh, I think we'll keep us level headed. I don't think anybody will argue the fact that Goofy definitely thinks about every move he's going to make. So, level headed is a great analysis for Goofy. Very true. Very true. Yeah, and yeah, he's he's doing this with his son. So I guess he's bringing up another generation of. Uh, level-headed manager so <laughs> have to see uh maybe maybe in the future we'll have his son as a manager in the league see what happens <laughs> all right time for me to make a pick so my number three pick number six overall in the nao pro bowl i'm going to go with swamp dick Ooh. Swamp dick so let's look over his little roster here quickly i kind of see stafford right away versus baltimore we just talked about how bad baltimore's uh secondary has been um so that looks like a pretty good one um i don't know they're looking down the rest i don't see a lot uh what do you think sean maybe maybe hollywood uh maybe the tennessee uh defense uh special teams what do you think looking down his as far so as taking the, the rules into consideration game. that each team needs to provide at least two position players. Right. Uh, there's two schools of thought when creating these teams. Do you go by the worst teams, worst teams in quotations, uh, and pick their best players and then fill in the rest? Or do you hope to God that you can mitigate risk and put players that might have good upside from those teams? And I think Humpty without the king, King Henry on – the roster i think that's exactly what you're going to try to do try to meet, mitigate risk risk and start guys that have huge upsides uh i think stafford is a good upside guy uh i would not play michael carter against tampa bay just to let you know uh and then maybe pitts against buffalo i mean atlanta needs to throw it to somebody it's a tough but, one too though it's a tough yeah one. you're gonna you have to make a lot of hard decisions looking at this roster no offense, Humpty. Love you. Yeah, no, no. It's just uh, he's got a he's got some tough matchups for sure. Um, you know, Hollywood's been getting a lot of targets, at least five catches per game in the last oh, five six games, something like that. Stafford's QB five on the season, so you know there's two guys right there that jump out. Maybe that Tennessee defense, but uh, yeah, I mean it, there's something to work with there. He's he's not you know I do I I do wish we had King Henry. Man, that'd be nice, but. Uh, <laughs> We're not going to have him for this matchup, unfortunately. Mike, moving forward, we talked about him a little bit. Uh, you know, moving forward, what do you see for for Ricky? His yeah. his his roster may look a lot different. Yeah, in that's, the future than that's it does what today, I think. Right? I think Ricky's biggest strength long term is he can build a team quick. So, and he has free, he has honestly probably I don't know if we talked about a lot of really great talent acquisition as well. When he he goes after a guy, you know, you look at Marquise Brown. Christian Kirk, obviously Kyle Pitts, um, Tyler Boyd. These are all guys that he went after specifically, and they're trending up since he's traded for him. So he knows yeah. what he's doing when he trades for a guy, and he can build a roster. You know, we went over the roller coaster of a roster he's done this year, but he can do it quick and he can do it well. Great point, take out Mike. Great point. Yeah, and I'll give him credit, too, uh, when he started uh, his little mini fire sale once uh, Henry went down. A bunch of us went after Hollywood Brown, and he that's one that he held fast on. He wasn't going to sell him for pennies on the dollar. Um, I tried. I think you tried too, Mike, didn't you? And, yeah. Um, yeah. It might have been. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. So here we are. All three of us went after Hollywood, and uh, he wasn't taking – he wasn't giving away for peanuts, that's for sure. So you're right. That's a, that's a good point, and uh, that just backs it up more that – you know he's he's definitely seeing something good in Hollywood. The numbers look good. That the the, uh, the metrics look good on him. So um, yeah, he wasn't he he's not moving guys for nothing. And he wouldn't sell pits. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, pits well, ain't going nowhere, no way. <laughs> well, I went for pits first, and he's like, okay, moving on. And we're like, okay, well, how about Hollywood? And he's like, well, okay, but you got to pay the right price. And none of us came up with the right price, and he's still got them on his roster. All right, moving on, moving on. Moving on. We've got two more picks to make here. You got your fourth pick. It's pick number seven overall for the NAO Pro Bowl. Sean, who's your pick? pick? 
is going to be da, 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 FNG. Mm -hmm. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the right option. You know what that means. <laughs> Fuck it, Marky Mark. Man, you know, they, we call it the Who Cares Bowl, but I care now. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> I needed to win to get the first pick because I was afraid of this happening. Ugh. All right, so you're taking FNG. Tell us, tell us, tell us who you're gonna play, Sean. Tell us who's. I who's picked the guy FNG to here because it wasn't Ian, and that is the only reason. Ah, okay. Oh. Well, looking at his roster, it's a tough one here. Maybe, maybe Cooper, since he did the squeaky wheel bit and he had a good game last week. He uh, he may still be on the, you know, getting the squeaky wheel targets coming up. Um, Renfro is a good option. Yeah, it's a good volume play there. Good volume play. I think the and best one, New England is playing there you go. Man, dude, we were like all we were right on the same page, man. <laughs> yeah, I think that's his best play. Uh New England DST versus Jacksonville. New England still playing. They're not gonna have him in their subs. They're still playing for division for uh seating. So that's they could blank Jacksonville. I'm just saying it right now. They could oh, blank. Yeah. Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, no, that, that could put up a 20 burger, man. So that's a, uh, maybe that, maybe for that reason, if nothing else, it's a good pick for this year. So, Mike, tank top, moving forward, what do you think for FNG? So we, uh, we counted Goofies. So in the first two rounds, Goofy had nine. Uh, FNG has 11. So we mm. have, we have 20 picks in the first two rounds in the next two years. Wow! So, uh, no kidding. So no kidding. if you guys Thank want some you. talent on your team, you got to come start trading with us. But you know, we're not going to give it up. We're not giving up any of these picks. Nope, they're staying in the division. Because now that yeah, now that you're on our team, you can only trade with us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, really, yeah, it's a lot of long-term stability there. Uh, you know, twenty picks in the first two rounds. That's 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 a ton. That's too many. That's too many. That's two added. lineups. Yeah. yeah. I'm interested to see what he does. Does he does he trade some away for players? Does he pick them all? He probably will do a little mixture of both. Um, he already got uh, um, Godwin, Godwin and, and Cooper. Cooper, and we already talked about those those being good moves down the stretch for him. And and um, and he still got that many picks, twenty picks <laughs> or not twenty. He's got the he's got the eleven. He's got the eleven. Um, so he's he's already making some moves, man. He's already done some good things. So. I'm really excited to see what he does, man. Really, yeah. Uh... All right. So I guess that means the the number eight overall, my fourth pick in the NAO Pro Bowl. I get stuck with the Pooh Crew. Yeah. So yeah, looking at his roster, I, I don't know. Is, is Kelsey active? Uh... <laughs> we'll, we'll never know. Yeah. We'll never know. <laughs> they maybe, don't announce maybe... those things. He's just. You read about it in the newspaper the next morning. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think now that he's on your team, you have to uh, adhere to his uh, nickname rule for every player. You have to refer to them as their nickname. Yeah. Oh man, I hope not. Yep. I don't. I don't want to have to do a whole another show on bad <laughs> nicknames. <laughs> I mean, we did have a show on that already. I don't want to have to do that again, man. I don't know. Yeah, Kelsey's probably. I think he got activated finally, and uh, could be a good play there. I I, I look at uh, Monty, David Montgomery versus the Giants, and uh, he's got uh, Taylor, Jonathan Taylor against uh, Las Vegas. Those could be some good plays. Cook came off COVID. Uh, he's got Green Bay, so he's got some plays. He's got some plays, but uh, ugh, I hate being stuck with him. Mike, what do you what do you think for the Pooh Crew? Moving forward. Well, I guess, you know, if I if I have the Mahomes, he has the Herbert. So it seems like he's going to be a guy you can just plug in, your worst-case scenario at quarterback for the next decade or so. Um, you know, obviously, Ian's got a, a good mixture of younger, older talent. So yeah. he's got a good yeah. team, obviously. Um, um, Jay, or Jonathan Taylor, long-term running back play there, obviously. Um, the only bad part about you know this whole thing is you got to deal with all these spreadsheets about how your team's doing the whole season because he's gonna keep track. He's gonna keep track. <laughs> Good luck trying to create a team with him on your team. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun, man. It'll be fun. I put a positive spin on it. I'm gonna enjoy 
having Ian on my on my Pro Bowl squad for the rest of time. <laughs> so after this show, uh, Marky Mark and I are gonna create uh, chats with all of our managers, and then we got to come up with names for our teams that are gonna stick. These names are gonna stick for the rest. So these are gonna be the names of our division until the end of time. So. Make good decisions, <laughs> make good decisions, and uh, come up with a good name. Uh, our rosters need to be in by. We have Saturday games this week. No, it's just it's all Sunday. One Monday Sunday game. morning. So we got three uh, days. We got three days. To yeah. Ian, so he can put them up on the website, so we can keep track. Yeah, we will do it as a group, and it'd be it'd be cool to come up with like AFL or no AFC NFC kind of acronyms for the teams, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. But we'll, we got to come up with some fun names for our our divisions, which will stand for the rest of time as well. Um, before we move on, do you want to just throw ours in there quick, uh, John? we we got to yes. put our rosters in there. So, yeah, I'm looking at uh, – we'll, we'll go with yours first. So, uh, The Prince, um, looking at yours, I think I'd be leery of J.J. You said that J.J. is going right in. But that's a division game against Green Bay. They they still got to win to to keep the top seed. They want to keep Minnesota out of there, I'm sure. You know, rub the salt in their wounds. So I'd be a little leery of JJ, although he is one of the best in the biz. Um, you got Smith and Goddard, Devonta Smith and Goddard going up against Washington football team. I think those are good ones. Um, you've been leery of playing Jeff Wilson, but if you'd have played him last week, he would have had more. More points. He would have been in the 180s. I think Jeff Wilson versus Houston is a good one. Don't get me started on fucking Jeff Wilson right now. <laughs> I know I know it's a sore subject. It's a trigger for me. I right? know. I know. And I'm sorry because I, 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 I advise you to play him too on that bad week. Uh, just don't play Cam. And, and and that's for you and for the Rams. Don't play Cam Akers. Please <laughs> play Cam Akers. So what do you think? Who do you, so you think you're going to have J.J. in? What, do you, what are you going to do there? Who's, who's well, your... I have options, which is nice, because uh, we have Waddle versus going against Tennessee, which could be a pretty good uh, play if we need somebody other than J.J. If, if my team feels that the divisional game uh, is going to be something we need to take into consideration. Uh, Thielen went to the IR, so he's gone for the rest of the season. Uh, and obviously, the, the last few games, they've shown that they're going to get the ball to Jefferson regardless which makes sense because he is their best player right now with uh, with their running back. Uh, oh, it's really – Which one for Minnesota? Cook? Yeah. Cook, so Cook being yeah. down. I can't believe I just forgot yeah, He's name. back in. He's off the COVID list, so he should be back in there. So if he's back, there is something that we need to talk about with it. But I think uh, my team is going to put up a really, really nice uh, – Stack of players, and I got a few that we can pull from. Uh, if we do not play the New England against Jacksonville, which we probably will, Tampa Bay is playing the New York Jets, just oh, so yeah. you know. Yeah, that's a good one. Well, before I kick it to Mike, I will say that if they don't double uh, Jefferson, which should be easy to do with uh, with Thielen out for sure, if they don't double him, he'll, he'll torch him. You know, he's, he's probably the highest graded against – uh, man coverage, one-on-one -on -one coverage, you know. But if they they double him, which they probably should, that's why I say it, it. It could be it could be a tough one for him. So think that over. But Mike, looking ahead, what do you think about the roster for the Prince? I think two things uh, jump out pretty much um, when you talk about when you factor in age and talent and everything. It's got to be, if not the top, you know, wide receiver core, you know, in the league. Um, you know, you look at in the next five, six years, these are guys that, you know, they're going to be wide receiver ones, twos for sure. Um, and with two wide receiver spots and three flex spots to fill, I eh, can't go wrong there. Um, the other thing is, Sean, you never stop making moves. So there's always something new coming down the old pipeline. So I'm excited to be on your team for this. <laughs> He's always shoring up that flex. <laughs> TM. And your yep. prices for players are very reasonable. So <laughs> extremely reasonable. Come to come to the prince's uh, fire sale, and we'll find out. We'll find something for you. All right. Well, the last roster we'll look at is mine. The tough luck kid. 
usually, you know, I think Kyler would be pretty much a consensus. Yeah, let's put him in at quarterback. I think that'd be a set and forget it. He's got a tough matchup this week going against Dallas, though. So and they're playing in Dallas, although they actually have been better away than they've been at home, which is kind of weird. But, yeah, uh, yeah Kyler would usually be a set it and forget it, but we might have to have some discussion on that. I think uh, Javante versus L.A. Chargers, I think that's money. I mean, I think that could be a really good one, maybe for the flex. Um, we got Keela versus Houston, which would be a good one in the tight end spot. I might get Elijah Mitchell back playing against Houston. Um, it's kind of iffy, so maybe you don't play the guy coming back off the injury, but, uh, you know, that could be a good one. So I definitely got some I got some players that can be put in there and contribute to this one. But uh, what do you think, Sean? What would you I think you got to consider uh, Jamar Chase against Kansas City. I, I understand Kansas City's defense has been better, and it's a – it's a big game, but I think they're both teams are going to be going for the jugular in this game. I think uh, they're both going to try to score as many points as possible. Obviously, they're trying to win the game, but I think it's going to be because Cincinnati, Joe Burrow, that team, younger team, they're they're going to try to set set the pace against a well-established uh, Patty Mahomes team, and if they come out and get the win, it's going to be more for the Team build is going to be so good for their team if they get the win. So they're going to be running on all cylinders. And the Cincinnati Bengals have a bunch of good targets, and you can't double double them all. So, And, you know, Joey, he loves his chase. So I think you, could, you should honestly think of uh, starting him in, against Kansas City. I haven't seen an update, but I remember – while watching the game last week that Tyrion Matthew came up hobbling one time. I don't remember if, what the injury was, but if he's out of there, then that's definitely going to be tough for Kansas City to cover all three of those guys. So you're right, Jamar could be somebody, but I was sort of looking at it like, uh, I don't know, that's, he's, he's been a little boomer bust, and, and Higgins has been the guy here lately. And mm-hmm. I was a little, little scared of that one. But, yeah, I have, I have to see what Matthew's doing. Mike, what do you think moving forward for uh, – the tough luck kid. What's the roster for the, the future? So we talk about FNG and we talk about Goofy and all these picks that, you know, we get to make on our side here. And, you know, they still have to make them and they still have to make them right. And you already did that. You know, you, you hit with Chase, you hit with Williams, you know, so you don't have those kind of early question marks. You know you can do it. And then the other point, you were down in the bottom four for almost the, you know, the beginning part of the season. You were uh, you even traded for your own pick at one point. <laughs> we all remember that happened, and you know you were you were a win away from you know from playoffs. So um, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing long term, and you know what moves to make. So I think I think uh, overall your team is a is a nice steady a nice steady ride. But you know you got Ricky. If you let Ricky drive the drive the plane, you know who knows. But over on our side, we, we, we got some wild cards. It'll be interesting. <laughs> Aw, shucks. Thanks. Thanks for the kind <laughs> words on mine. Hope I can live up to that moving forward. Well, I think I that's over. For the whole NAO show and crew and all the people behind the scenes when I say we are ready for this Pro Bowl. It's going to be a good time. This is all supposed to be good fun. Uh, come up with good names. We're going to put the best teams out there. I think we got a bunch of managers in this league that can definitely make a who's who of these uh, divisions. So, on that note, Ian, you suck. <laughs>